right screen. All right. Yeah. Uh, hey, everybody. Welcome to, what is it, October 20th MakerDAO Community Call. My name is David Utrobin, and I'm here with Derek Flossman, uh, one of the foundation team members. Uh, and today we have a really special community call for you. But before I get into why it's special, just a really quick uh, overview about what the community call even is. Uh, the community call has been kind of running every Tuesday for years. Um, and so uh, I do community development at the foundation and I get the pleasure of hosting these. And typically we do like uh, whatever has been happening over the last week in Maker. We try to give uh, whoever is watching or listening an update on just what's happening with regards to governance, with regards to integrations, with regards to like interesting community, current events, um, et cetera, et cetera. But every once in a while, we like to have uh, interesting guests, demos, uh, people who are building with DAI, uh, foundation team members who are building stuff on top of governance. <clears throat> That's what's happening today. And uh, and yeah, so uh, today is going to be really cool. We have Derek, uh, and he... Uh, actually, I'll let Derek introduce himself, but we're going to be talking about the governance portal redesign today. And so... Uh, as usual, feel free to drop questions in the chat. I'm happy to raise them on your behalf. Uh, I think we are looking uh, for a lot of feedback. Any feedback you give is obviously a gift and it's greatly appreciated by the team, no matter how constructive it is. So please, please share with us what your thoughts are. So yeah, uh, Derek, it is all you, man. Awesome, thank you very much. Um, so yeah, in terms of a short introduction. Uh, I, I work at the foundation with the design team and the JavaScript team uh, predominantly. And in this case, it's been about the, uh, the the voting screen, the governance portal. So I will share my screen and we can dive into it. And uh, absolutely um, jump in with questions along the way. This is very much an interactive um, you know, tell me where you guys want to go on the screen and I will follow along. Um, so, first of all, David, can you guys see my screen? Uh, yeah, we can. We can. Awesome. Okay. So, you know what would um, be cool to see, by the way? Uh, if you can show side by side the old portal and the new portal at some point, that would be really cool as well. Just to highlight the visual update, not just like the functional update of the site. But that I would be can cool. indeed which is actually a good starting point because uh, we are going to continue uh, maintaining the old vote site, which is the one you guys see now. And you'll see the URL for that is slightly different. It's v1.vote.makeitout.com. Nice. So, Do you have an idea about how long it's going to be updated for? Is there like a tentative like one year uh, thing on it or two year thing on it? Um, I. I don't really know. I think what I'm going to see is let's just monitor the usage. If the usage drops off straight away, then maybe we're looking at a little bit less. Um, it really depends on uh, people's comfort levels with you know, using the new site. Uh, there's also some capability that we want to uh, use. Sorry, David, I can hear myself twice in the background. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, no worries. Uh, there's, there's also some additional um, features that we, we need to integrate. So you'll see here we have the modules, which takes you to the, the emergency shutdown module. And uh, there's also the onboarding, so voting contracts, stuff like that, that we haven't yet built into the new site. So as those capabilities get um, brought into the new site, then we'll we'll be able to um, you know stop having the, the v1 dot vote. But for now, it'll still be live, so um, people can uh, definitely access it if they if they need to. But um, for a comparison, I think the new one looks a lot better. Um, but also, if you guys have like stylistic feedback, um, there's been discussion around the way we illustrate million and billion. You'll see on the site, we, we have the capital M and B capitalized. Maybe, you know, this 1.48B kind of gets a bit confusing on the eye, uh, especially when you uh, put this down to mobile view. So things like that, uh, we're going to tweak and work through and update as we go. Um, so yeah. Feel free to comment. Nice. nice. Uh, so there is one comment from Matt. It's a question about will the underlying uh, voting smart contract be the same? It is currently the same, yes. Uh, also, I wanted to uh, quickly, if, do you have the names of who is on the uh, product team or design team who worked on this? I'd love to give them a shout out. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, do, you, do you want me to rattle off names or yeah, yeah, give yeah, you a list? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
No, all go right. for it, man. Gosh, am I going to catch them all? They're probably all listening to this call. Okay, so we, we have uh, we have Josh, who's worked a lot in the past on the polling. Uh, he also helped us build the rank choice voting initially. Uh, we have Tyler, uh, who's also worked um, on, on governance for quite a long time. Uh, we have Ashoka and also Ethan. Both of those guys have done a lot of work uh, on all front-end work uh, Front end styling, uh, and then when it comes to styling, we have Mike uh, from the the design team uh, who has helped us style this uh, the way it looks today. Uh, we also have uh, Lawrence, the lead of the tech team, uh, that have been working on this. And now I really hope I've caught everyone. Haha! <laughs> <laughs> See, that's why I delegated this task to you because I for sure would have missed like half of those people. Uh, but <laughs> yeah, I, lo I love all those guys. We uh, at some point, I think I met every single one of those people, and they're awesome individually yeah, and collectively. They've done a wonderful job. And so the time frame that we've actually been working on this has been the, the last quarter for polling and executive voting. Uh, we, we started off the quarter before that on building up what information people wanted as part of this landing page. Uh, and then we moved on to the polling and executive work, which, which happened, as I said, in the, in the previous quarter of this year. Uh, and at the time we started this, there wasn't any work uh, or that there wasn't any um, progress in the community with regards to off-chain voting like you've seen with uh, YAMS or YEARN uh, with the snapshot capability. So that's something we're still interested in and it'll move us more towards that you know, complete uh, off-chain, uh, no-cost voting. Uh, we're much better today with the... Um, the batch polling, which I'll get into in a minute, um, but you know, there's, there's an evolution over time that you know crypto moves so quickly. Uh, so it's actually quite cool to see that you know we're we, we're catching up, we're getting there. So anyway, yeah, with definitely. And just to jump in, right? Uh, I I believe that that uh, move to like full snapshot uh, is that in line with the new governance, like the new DSS chief uh, redesign? Is that something? that uh, uh, is part of that actual smart contract redesign? Or uh, can you like expand a little bit on, on how the portal redesign connects with the chief redesign that's coming in the medium term future? Okay, so the, the chief design is different from what we're walking through today. The chief design will let you have multiple concurrent executive votes at any point in time. So instead of having to bundle executive votes like we do today, where we say you know, adding a collateral type, changing a debt ceiling, um, making other changes, um, that's not possible in the current system, but it will be in the new chief contract. And as a result, we will have to redesign the executive page to handle um, multiple concurrent executives. Um, so hopefully that clears up the difference yeah, between the great. portal. Yeah, um, cool. So, um, yeah, like I said, um, actually, let's start here. There's a good point. Um, we, we have call to actions on the front page, which um, the goal of this was that uh, people struggled to initially look at the page and realize, okay, what, what's, what's happening in governance? What, what do I need to do as a maker holder, uh, as a, a, a stakeholder interested in the community? What are the latest polls? So we've actually got 16 new polls this week, which is quite a lot. So. David, when you go to vote, which I think you may already have voted, um, you'll be able to do so through batch polling. And uh, this site should be going live in the next couple of hours. Uh, and if not, feel free to clear the cache and you should get it to load. And it should do so through uh, the website that you know, the um, vote.makeitout.com site. I'll, you'll notice I'm using a slightly different one here. Um, but. Nevertheless, so we have these call to actions here, and you'll notice if I connect my wallet, which I'm using MetaMask, uh, it'll change to 15. I've actually already voted on one, so this is referencing your your participation in polls uh, already. So just a little flag that that will be relevant to you as an individual. Uh, we've list, listed out the system stats. These were the main ones: the die savings rate, total amount of die, the debt ceiling, and the surplus. Uh, we've also linked to die stats because a lot of people were asking us, hey, where's that cool site that Mariano built? So pointing people in the direction there. 
Derek, We've is all... this is that actually where you pull the info from, or do you guys pull it uh, kind of in your own method? Uh, I believe the development team pulled it directly from the uh, the contracts. They were looking at using nice. multi-call to pull it, but I'll let them jump on and comment if they want to in more detail. Cool. Um, guys, if you are on, feel free to free to comment anywhere. Um, but yeah, the uh, to your, your point there, David, the, the numbers should be the same. Uh, there shouldn't be any discrepancy there because I know DiceStats uh, pulls the information the same way. Um, and then we have uh, links to the intro to governance, which ComDev guys, you guys will be very familiar with, same as community tools and the forum for all the discussions and that jumps straight to the governance section. And then we list the, uh, the most recent executive vote showing that it's the governing proposal and the amount of MKR on it. And then you can click through and view that if you want. Same with the polling votes. There are, as we saw before, 16 of them at the moment. Uh, we're only showing the top four or five here, top four. And then you can click through and uh, look at all of those as you wish as well. And then we've uh, brought in the specific governance blog posts as well. And that, in a nutshell, is the front page. Um, so I... It sounds like uh, so. Get, uh, let me know if uh, if I'm on point here. So it sounds like the front page is meant to be for the MKR voter who's like, all right, I gotta just see what's happening like right now at this very moment. So like they go to the front page, they see you know the call to action, which is like the most urgent thing. They see kind of all the links to the resources, but then right under they see like the executive votes and the polling votes that are either most recent for the executive vote or are currently active. Uh, for the polling, right? Uh, I'm, I have a question. Is there a way that uh, that the polling votes are actually chosen to be displayed on the front page versus like, because I know there's 16 that are active right now, and I see that there's about four that are on the front page. Uh, I'm curious, like, uh, what the uh, what the criteria for getting on the front page as a poll is. Uh, it's recency at the moment. Recency, okay. Right, so how, how recent, the, the latest polls will be the ones that show uh, in the order that they're submitted. So we could have sense. a parameter that would be, you know, potentially a star uh, favorite um, that Long for Wisdom when he submits or another governance facilitator submits a poll that would warrant it to show up. Um, that, that would be, yeah, uh, uh, another requirement, but that's fine. That sounds like a, a super cool idea. But yeah, cool, thanks for answering. Cool, yeah, no worries. Um, so let's go on onwards to polling. Um, so like I, like I mentioned on the previous screen, uh, I had already voted for one, so I can see a little star here that cool, I voted. So I am connected. Um, I've already read through the governance uh, the, the monthly MIPS, so I'm pretty confident. Let's walk through an example and let's add that into the ballot. So you'll see here I have a little uh, indicator of how many polls are available uh, or active polls are available. Uh, I've added one to my list, so let's keep going down. Approve the maker representatives. I could vote straight away through here or I could actually have a look just to make sure I'm good with uh, what the governance facilitator has put in. And I see many familiar names, so that's awesome. So again, let's go with the yes, add that to my ballot. Now, the, the capability here is I can either, I can either go to a next poll uh, and read through and vote again. I can go back to a previous poll, uh, but I quite like where you'll see that it's registered that I have added yes for this poll to my, my ballot. Uh, but I quite like the overview page, so I will jump back uh, which lets me confirm that yes, these are here, they're added to my ballot. Uh, I haven't voted on these other ones. So we've tried to make it pretty clear so that users can understand where they are when there's such a long list of uh, polls and what remaining items they can vote on. Uh, and then let's say I were just going to look at these two, not the full list. Then I can go to the uh, review page and that will show me the, the additional two that I want to vote on. Uh, I guess we've got time. So let's actually go back to, into the polling and, and vote on a few more. Uh, we know we want the medianizer. Add that to my ballot. You'll see it adds on there. Uh, again, Oracle works. That's all good stuff. 
uh, the green light pole, so yes, why not? Um, absolutely, this is all good. I forgot to add it to my ballot. There we go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> One crit crucial step, you gotta make sure that it's on there. The good thing is though, that, uh, oh yeah, more collateral types, that's great. Um, okay. Is there ballot. a limit? like uh, to how many votes you could put on your ballot or is the limit just how many active governance polls there are at any given time? Uh, there is no limit. And JS guys jump on if there is a limit I'm not aware of, but I believe as many active polls that there are, you can vote on. So all of them would not be a problem. I'm sure there's some upper number limit, but nice. essentially for yeah, what we're managing, you know, within the say up to twenty to yeah, you know, thirty, I don't think I've ever seen any more than that for a week wouldn't be a problem. Um I won't go through and vote at the moment, but let's see what the gas comes in at. So here looking at about eight eight for three dollars. I think gas has gone up today. This morning it was around one dollar, so yeah, um, I actually put in a vote this morning for, I believe, the remaining four or five ballots that I didn't vote on, uh, and it cost me about a dollar and ten cents for the fast option, and it processed right away. Oh, nice. Cool. Yeah, so so that's polling. Uh, are there any questions on, on how polling works? Actually, one thing I didn't click into for you guys. Uh, was also we've retained the vote breakdown. I, I forgot to mention that because in the current version, you'll remember that we actually show it in the right hand column. And there was feedback from the community that people are swayed by automatically seeing that and going, uh, I, I'm, I'm not going to vote or I will vote in that direction. And there was sort of a consensus feel that it was driving people's votes one way or another. Um, so we, Wanted to keep it there because people are still interested in knowing where's the majority, uh, where's the, yeah, the, the, where are the key drivers on which side of the poll. Um, so it's still there, but it's just not as prominent. So um, we haven't lost any functionality. We've just hidden it a little for those that don't want to see it straight up. Hopefully that makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. Cool. Okay. Um, Right now, executive. Uh, if you want, I could uh, really quickly <clears throat> read out uh, the thing that Frank wrote in the chat. Uh, mm -hmm. He said that one thing re uh, that remains the same, if I'm polling for, say, the community green light poll for Uniswap, and I want to read up on such via the forum thread, uh, it takes me out of the vote.makerdao.com website, and I then have to reload the web page once I'm done reading it on the forum. Anyway, you can hyperlink, I think he means link out, so that it opens a new web page. Not sure if my request makes sense, yeah. Yeah, no, no, that makes total sense. Um, we, that is an outstanding uh, piece of work we have to do um, to make sure that these load as new pages, not replacing the current page, because then, yes, it takes you out and you uh, will have to, um, uh, yeah, resubmit your vote. So yeah, yeah that's, that's so, a good point. I'm so if you that. leave the web page uh, completely, it clears the cache and it like clears what's on your ballot if you didn't submit the transaction. Yes. Got it. That's good to know. Yeah, because you'll see I need to reconnect, and my zero of fifteen has not registered the previous eight that I had selected. Ah, uh, I see. I see. So, um. Yeah, that that's something we will we will continue to fix. Um, typically, I do the command click, um, so I open a new window with it. But to get away with that, we will change these links and make them open in, in new windows. Nice, nice. But yeah, yeah. That, that's a good call. And then uh, Sam also added a piece of feedback. He wrote, selecting the option of a vote and then pressing add to ballot. Sometimes I miss pressing that button. Perhaps selecting the drop down option could be sufficient enough to add to the ballot automatically. So like, I guess removing that need for a button click. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I, yeah, that, that's a good point because you see, I actually missed that once or twice when I was going through doing them all. There was a, a forgetful mis misclick. Um, so yeah, let me make a note of that as well. That's a good, good call. 
Yeah, sweet, sweet. That was really cool. good feedback. Yeah, thank you guys. It's one of those things where when, without putting it in front of the whole community to engage with, um, it's, uh, yeah, it makes it much easier. Totally, totally. Cool. Okay, so uh, let's move on to executives. Uh, actually, I remember one thing I've forgotten. We are still working on categorizing polls. So this is back to polling. Sorry for the, the jumping around. Um, we, we've introduced two filters as well. So it, we will have categories for polls such as risk values, collateral onboarding, uh, oracles, um, governance changes like process changes or technical changes uh, that require contract changes. Um, so those will be categories that will be, or poll types, I should say, that will be listed here. Uh, just to make it easier for someone to filter down to, oh, I remember there was a poll that was about a collateral type in July. Uh, then you can also click through date selection and be able to find what you're looking for a little easier. And we nice. also so yeah. quickly. So this sounds like uh, so this sounds like um, this new redesign portal is supposed to also act as an archive of all historic votes, right? Is that kind of the goal? Yes. So you will be able to find uh, all the polls relative to a time, a specific time uh, through this capability. Yeah. And the alternative way, if you want to, if you are really trying to look at all the polls, you could look in GitHub, uh, where we have all of the um, the polls mentioned. But this should be easier. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Okay. And yeah, we, we have the same um, sort by date or date posted capability if you're looking for a particular executive vote, executive proposal. And something which is new on this site is we show more proposals. So, <clears throat> excuse me, you can also um, you know, expand that and then view all the older proposals as well as the amount of MKR that is uh, still supporting them. So it's quite easy and helpful to see the distribution. So we're looking really good on the, the latest executive, 92,000 MKR, that's great. It's a lot of security on the hat, which is awesome. Uh, and then, you know, the, the older ones, 20,000, 40,000, et cetera. So it's good to get a view of um, what amount of MKR is supporting where or where it's been forgotten and not moved up. That's actually so, so cool because usually you see like something sub 100k MKR is usually like maybe 80, 90, 75,000 MKR is the typical barrier to get something past. Uh, just heuristically, I'm kind of observing. But looking through these uh, old executives, you could see that like a third of all MKR, like almost 300,000 MKR is just sitting in governance, which is actually incredibly impressive. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's really, really important with the um, sort of the way the ecosystem has changed a little bit this year with all the the uh, yield farming and uh, what liquidity pools exist where, uh, whether or not those pose a threat or not. But it, it's important to see the amount that we have on the proposals um, from a security perspective as well. So, um, yeah, really happy to have that view uh, that we had in a previous and another older site, but not the, the, the governance site that we had before, so. Totally. Cool, well, so let's, uh, we're connected, so let's go in and have a look. So a few changes on this page, um, you, you, you're able to vote directly on it uh, in the, in the right-hand side. Um, you've got the proposal detail, so as we're all familiar with uh, what Lump for Wisdom types into the detail, it's all there. Uh, we've got the on-chain effect, uh, which is pretty cool because it shows you the changes from a contract level that are happening, and you can confirm that contract at the Etherscan or at the spell address on Etherscan. So this does what like Catflip does, right? Exactly. Catflip.co is uh, a, a lot of uh, MKR voters' favorite site for seeing like directly the system change, you know. Yeah, but the benefit with this is that you can actually see what those changes are before the spell oh, makes the so protocol cool. change. So if you're concerned that, oh, I, I'm not really sure if the debt ceiling's correct or, you know, the copy 
might you know, may raise some questions, we can actually go and have a look here and exactly see the parameter change. Um, we've had some feedback about this that maybe we can make it a little easier to read. For example, some of these numbers are quite long and potentially confusing. What is exactly spot rate or dust limits and things like that, that we can probably add a little bit more color to for the average user. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, is this automated? Uh, so basically, this is this manually done or yeah, it's automated, right? Automated, cool. yeah. Amazing. Yeah, yeah. So this is like automatic <clears throat> uh, executive vote auditing and people don't even have to know how to read the code. They could just see that. That's yeah. so freaking cool. Wow. That's that's yeah. actually a huge knocking down of a, of a, a serious barrier for accountability and governance. So uh, kudos to the team for this, because this is this is incredible. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, super helpful. And I, I think the smart contracts team referenced it as well when a new spell is created just to make sure as part of their audit trail that, okay, we've checked and the front end ref ref reflects it as well. Um, there's going to be more, uh, there will be additional changes we'll make to this, not only for the jug and the VAT contract. So this list will gradually grow so that it, it encompasses other contracts as well because that's something that we're able to build out. Uh, Sam asked in the chat, does this show unknown changes, uh, things that don't fall into the well-known uh, categories? So at the moment, it won't show changes that fall outside of JUG and VAT. So I, Got I, it. Got it. Yeah. Um, which is why we want to show all the contracts in due course where there could be changes so that it's visible. Yeah, looking forward to the expansion of this tool. This is really cool. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I mean, uh, Catflip really sort of showed the initial view and then we're like, that's awesome because it's a quick, easy way to see the changes. So to bring it before the contract is launched and makes protocol changes, it's um, super useful. Right, right. And then the comments field. So someone has said, I don't know, who was this? Was this you, David? <laughs> We've oh, seen that. Yeah, someone, someone made a comment, uh, I guess, about the liquidation ratio. So uh, if we were to go and vote, uh, we are able to add a comment in here uh, with our voting weight. Again, we're able to see the amount supporting, the amount after, and, um, and away we go and vote. So, um, so other, otherwise, we have resources that uh, follow along with the um, both the executive page and the polling page. Some UI enhancements that the team made, particularly around the polling page, is that the, the right-hand side of the screen follows you as you work your way through the polls. So that's super helpful because you're always seeing and have the ballot visible. Um, yeah, that's super important. Yeah. Yeah. So I. I think I've covered everything off in terms of um, the executives with the, the three sub tabs here, proposal detail, on-chain effects, the comments. Um, and those, those comments, once you, you will vote for the proposal, you'll, you then get a message that you sign with your wallet and then that'll appear in the list um, with amount of MKR. I think the one thing to mention with the amount of MKR is the amount of MKR uh, that the user has in their wallet at the current point uh -huh. in time. So we're doing a quick check. Uh, this is really probably mostly relevant at or around the time of voting. So we haven't you know, created a separate database to do a point in time amount of MKR, say if we were looking at it from three months in the future or yeah, looking back three months, that may not be accurate at that time. So question, just to clarify. So when a person uh, submits their vote and signs this message as a comment, it takes a snapshot and has a static MKR number of what they had at the time of signing the message? Or is it kind of continually updating with however much the person has in their wallet. I, I kind of didn't didn't really get that. So the sorry, yeah, no, you're right. The the second the second point there. So if I were to let's say I voted on this and then changed my balance, the balance would then 
reflect my current balance, not the balance uh, at the okay. time of voting. So it's not a snapshot of a point in time. It's that balance signed this message and that account currently has this amount of MKR, which may deviate from what was actually used when voting. Got it. That makes sense. Yeah. But because of the nature of, um, I guess, wanting to know at or around the time of voting, you know, how important it is to someone who's a whale or maybe not, then it's, we kind of left it as it is here. Yeah, so any, any other questions that people may have, feel free to jump in. Or if you see things that are slightly you would want to change or you have questions around, um, feel free. I know that uh, in in one of the chats, uh, somebody, I believe Rune was who asked uh, if you can comment on governance polls. And uh, kind of, I know that I'm kind of already premeditating the answer because I know you can't at the moment. Uh, is there plans to implement that and if not kind of yeah what's the status of that yeah so we we can certainly do it if the community want to have that as a capability with polls absolutely um the it can be extended to support the the polls in the same way that we do it for executive voting we felt that executive voting was more important to have that understanding and validation from community members in a written form more so than polling. So we, we said, let's just go with executives for now. And if it gains traction, if people like it, uh, if it gets used, then we can also look to have that uh, work with polling. The one thing I will say, though, is that this polling solution uh, does have in some way a limited lifespan if we see the snapshot solution take off uh, and in talking with those guys there also feels like there's an opportunity for comments to be used there as well so uh, again nice. in an off-chain voting solution uh, we, we should be able to support the same thing for, for polling yeah very cool yeah i think uh uh and to kind of color and give more context to the people watching the call uh i know that Whenever there's like a vote, even a contentious vote that might be like, you know, 50-50 uh, yes versus no or something like that, uh, you know, when it resolves no, everybody is kind of sitting there scratching their head asking why. And the ability to actually comment as a voter and say, hey, this is why I voted no is like obviously an incredible piece of feedback if uh, the person who authored the proposal that's being voted on wants to revise it and resubmit it in the future. That way, like, you know, future revisions and submissions aren't guessing at the reason why somebody voted no, you know. So having that information is just another piece of, uh, of the community's ability to communicate with each other and the ability for voters to communicate uh, with each other uh, about the fundamental reasoning behind their votes. Uh, and we would think that, you know, voters would want to do that because ultimately everybody's on the same team. Everybody wants a better managed, better designed uh, protocol. And so it's in everybody's interest to kind of give that kind of feedback when you vote. In fact, that might be more important than the vote itself, right? Yeah, yeah, uh, and absolutely, yeah. Nice, nice. Yeah. Uh, cool. So I'm gonna uh, give it like maybe like another five, six minutes uh, for people to to ask questions and stuff. Uh, I am curious uh, about uh, a few things myself. Uh, so I know that uh, there was a site. Uh, I think there still is a site called mkrgov.science that has like a lot more analytics about like the on-chain stuff for votes. It has like nice visualizations and graphs. Uh, is there something in like the future timeline of the governance portal where you would be able to have kind of these kinds of analytics uh, combined with the governance portal? Do you see that happening ever? Yeah. Um, so at the moment, I don't have the type of MKR uh, gov science uh, analytics on the roadmap for this site. Um, I think the next work in terms of just a level set expectations, the, the next 
set of work we're looking at, at doing is working on the liquidations 2.0 uh, interface. So right on, that's right going to be a big, big chunk of work, which is super important. Um, there, there were a number of nice to haves uh, that we were thinking for for this portal was would be to have um, like a user admin page where it's more specific to you and your engagement in governance over time. So, you know, how have you voted, and how many of the the votes that you voted on were actually went in the way of the way the protocol went? So, how you've contributed to it, and then NFTs, how they could play a role. So, there's a lot of opportunity. Um, in this sort of customization, uh, participation, uh, gathering, gaining more involvement from people in the overall process, uh, which we've been looking at as well. So um, I'm sure the, the MKR Gov uh, site, in terms of the way analytics are used there to represent um, voting participation over time, where they have those graphs, which is quite cool, um, which I've, I've referenced quite a lot, um, just to get a, a feel to sort of sentiment um, has been quite useful. So yeah, like feedback like that, where we can incorporate um, additional capability, is um, definitely welcome. I haven't put nice. it on the roadmap yet, but um, the more I hear about it, if people want it, then that's super helpful. Uh, nice. Which it kind of leads me to my other question: if uh, if somebody wanted to kind of help your team work on the governance portal, uh, what's the method for them to reach out and help? Uh, is there like available resources for something like that? Like I know uh, Amy and community development do grants. Like, is there an opportunity for somebody to say, "Hey, like I want to pick up your work while you guys are are prioritizing like liquidations or whatever else you guys might be prioritizing"? I want to come and help. Give me some of these like uh, feature feature lists and like you know. So, what is the way for somebody to kind of get engaged like that and jump on that opportunity? Yeah, yeah, good question. I think the Best way here is to uh, reach out to Amy. Um, Amy and I have discussed this before because I, I know when we've got sort of big chunks of work like the liquidation stuff coming down the track, there are going to be other things like intimate access modules perhaps. When uh, we have MIT 17, which is the manual uh, implementation of debt ceilings, but then uh, what happens after that if the community are comfortable with that implementation, then potentially there's an opportunity for uh, an instant access module which you could uh, access through this site that would give you specific parameter capability for changes in the system and that would be something that uh, you know we could provide requirements for someone so if anyone's interested in that sort of level of work then absolutely uh, reach out to Amy on that and Amy and I will will gladly sort of um, look at the resources and availability of work and and see what can be done so uh, what are the back end and front end like language? Like I know the front end stuff. Uh, most people probably it's probably like what React. Uh, like yeah, I, I would love kind of like a laundry list of of uh, skills that would be good for a person uh, to work on this. Yeah, I'm I'm probably going to butcher all the names. So I don't know if anyone from the JS team is on. Feel free to 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 shout out. Um, otherwise, I'm happy to add to the forum post uh, the languages that are used and. Um, the systems behind how we've built it. Yeah, sweet. So sweet. If, if no one wants to jump jump out and, and give a, a laundry list, I'll, I'm happy to collate that and put it into the forum post. Yeah, also generally speaking, uh, uh, if because I know that uh, you are definitely a busy man, Derek. Uh, also generally speaking, uh, reach out to Derek uh, or reach out, yeah, it's Amy and like, uh, or anybody who's here on the team, like Joshua, I, I know has been pretty active in the chat for this call. Uh, I'm sure that uh, literally any one of these people will be totally, totally helpful to plug you in. Uh, so if you are even just dancing around with the idea of coming and helping and like seeking a way to be uh, you know a contributor in this way uh, reach out to anybody we have a really really great community and I'm sure uh, your request won't go ignored so yeah yeah definitely definitely feel free to reach out all right nice yeah catching up on the comments in the in the right hand side but I I think Josh has been helping me out along the way that's cool I'm just setting up myself for doing a, I guess for the last uh, 15, 20 minutes of the call, 
uh, we're going to do like a run through of Maker Relay episode 17, which was released by uh, Tim, uh, Anna, and uh, and Jerry and Luis uh, last night. Uh, so they are on the GovComs uh, working group. So they're actually uh, a team of people in the DAO, uh, community members who are uh, basically putting together this weekly uh, relay newsletter. Uh, publication, whatever you want to call it. There's a lot of synonyms it can go by. But uh, yeah, it covers pretty much what I used to create every every Tuesday for this call, which is like a weekly agenda of all the updates and stuff. So for the last 15 minutes, we're going to run through the relay and see uh, and kind of see what's going on. All right. Yeah. So is there anything, Derek, in that chat that you want to explicitly uh, answer to? Uh, I think there was uh, Josh confirmed one one item where we're sort of looking at an upper limit of, a, of about thirty um, polls per ballot. So um, just yeah, thanks Josh for confirming that. Nice. So if there was uh, a week where there was like thirty two polls, uh, you would have to do two. <laughs> God help us. <laughs> You'd have to do uh, two ballots. I believe the front end would give you an error out. Uh, okay, cool. So we got to make sure that we don't hit that 30 plus. <laughs> oh, geez. Okay, cool. Nice. Yeah, but it sounds like a, it sounds like it might be pretty easy to fix. Uh, although I'm totally uh, not privy to what it would take to fix. It. <laughs> <laughs> we'll we'll make sure that if it errors, I'll make a note that you know if if there is an error, then. Um, if, we, if we don't have a rationale as to why that it's known to the user that you've exceeded a, a particular limit. Yeah, cool, cool. Well, cool, this thanks, was a... thanks for the feedback and comments in, in, the, in the column, guys. Yeah, they are super, super duper helpful, so thanks. And also, if you come up with any feedback after the call, feel free to reach out as well. Uh, I'm going to post the link to the forum thread, so if you have any feedback, uh, the easiest way to give it is to just post on there. All right, cool. Yeah, well, with that being said, thank you very much, Derek. It's always, always, always a pleasure to have you on the call and to, uh, yeah, to do these uh, demos and feedback sessions. So always thank you. And you and the team have been doing killer work. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Thanks, David. Peace. All right, cool. So if you want to follow along for the next like 15 minutes about uh, Maker Relay, there is a button right underneath this like Maker thing. It, it's a little green call to action. It's like glowing. It says Maker Relay. If you click on it, it will bring you to uh, the forum uh, like uh, tag section for Maker Relay, and it's listed by latest. So uh, yeah, they uh, they published the, this one about 18 hours ago, and uh, I believe Luis actually published the Spanish translated one uh, also about four hours ago. So uh, we are trying to make Maker News a bit more um, inclusive of other communities around the world that might not be English speaking who also want to keep updated and stay, uh, yeah, just stay up to date on what's happening in MakerDAO. So cheers. Cheers to Luisa uh, on that. And I believe, yeah, Chow is saying in the chat that he's working on Portuguese as well, which is exciting. Uh, all right, cool. So let me share my screen and get into the news or the relay rather. I feel like news is a very divisive descriptor of publications. It's like, oh, news? Screw that stuff. All right, uh, you should be able to see my screen now. Actually, I'm going to try to make it a little bit wider for you guys and maybe like zoom in a little bit so the the words are a bit more legible for everybody okay cool uh so yeah uh props i believe to anna i haven't really gotten uh, an understanding of who makes these uh banners for the episode each week but uh this one's really pretty it's red it's my favorite color haha <laughs> not <laughs> but <laughs> uh, see red or does that look like orange to you guys? No idea. They're cousins, orange and red. Anyway, enough of me rambling about colors. Uh, so yeah, uh, hey everybody, thanks for checking out the Maker Relay. Uh, yeah, whether you hold Maker or die, own a vault, want to get more involved, this is the one-stop shop for updates. So definitely bookmark 
uh, this maker relay uh, link right here. If you bookmark this, you will be all set. I'm going to put that in chat so you can't miss it. All right. And so, yeah. Uh, let's go on. So the first section of the Maker Relay typically covers votes, which is really great. Uh, we have a voter onboarding guide. So if you're an MKR uh, holder and you're interested in voting and you're kind of intimidated uh, and you're curious on how to do that, uh, you could check out the voter onboarding guide. Uh, I believe it takes you to yeah the governance section of Learn, how voting works. Uh, and then, yeah, you can kind of dig deeper into governance uh, in all of these sub pages, but this is a really great resource. Uh, it kind of talks you through the voting contract. It, it brings you through the what the idea of like governance polls and executive votes are. Uh, and it kind of goes through, yeah, a, a bunch of stuff. So there's no shortage of resources uh, for you to get onboarded into voting. Uh, and likewise, reach out to us on the chats, on the forum. People are help happy to, uh, to help uh, help you get set up. So yeah, monthly governance cycle. Uh, there is, so we are actually currently in week three of the October governance cycle. Uh, and so we had a, yeah, uh, we had a governance poll, monthly governance poll that bundles all of the MIPS. Uh, this is here. <clears throat> so in last week's relay, uh, we were going through inclusion polls. So on week two, typically what happens is each individual MIP that is formally submitted to the governance cycle, each individual one is voted, should it be included in this governance poll or not? And, uh, and so uh, this is that bundled governance poll, uh, and it includes all of these MIPs. Uh, I actually, you know what, I might as well um, go into 16 and, and, or no, sorry, we are in 16, or no. We're in 17, haha. So let me actually show you guys what these are. So these are the different uh, votes. So yeah, here, so cool. So protocol die transfer update. Uh, this this uh, is basically uh, a way to get the protocol to have a process for transferring die to a specified ETH address. Uh, MIP20 is the target price adjustment module, which is a, uh, it's an, an iteration, it's an improvement on the old TRFM idea, which is the target rate feedback mechanism idea. But basically this helps governance have the ability to do negative rates on DAI. Uh, and obviously this is just being voted in as some functionality to the protocol. It's not actually being used yet. A separate vote will have to happen for, uh, for this tool to be used, but nevertheless, it gives uh, you know traders, market makers uh, who are primarily in die markets the security that the peg will be enforced. Uh, and I think that even just as a psychological signal, having this tool is an important important thing to the ecosystem. And so uh, MKR voters have agreed. I believe that the uh, inclusion poll. Uh, ran through yes with like flying colors on this, so it was really cool. Uh, MIP21 is real world asset off chain asset backed lender. Uh, this is, I'm not going to get into the details of this, but check it out. Uh, uh, and in general, uh, you know what? I'm going to actually just come back to the current relay. In general, uh, as you go through the relay, feel free to click through on any of these. They always go to uh, the forum thread that has all the details on all of them. So yeah, check those out. And also I believe the this week's discussion link points to uh, Charles's uh, weekly MIPS update, which is great. Also, I just realized the Maker Relay episode and the up MIPS updates are actually in sync, 17 and 17. So that's, that's pretty cool. Uh, anyway, yeah, so there's a, a number of proposals in the request for comment. Uh, yeah, so, I, <laughs> sorry, I'm like skipping around. So I'm not going to go through all the other ones. If you're interested, just check them out. Uh, yeah, uh, we only have 10 minutes, so I kind of want to run through things a little bit quicker this week. Uh, we have a number of proposals in the request for comment phase. These are proposals that are in the forums. They haven't been formally submitted to the monthly governance cycle or even weekly governance cycle. Uh, but they are still in discussion, and this is a really important uh, 
phase for any MIP or subproposal. It gives the community, MKR voters, integrators, anybody who's a stakeholder, the ability to go in, read what's being proposed, comment issues with what's being proposed, comment improvements on what's being proposed, comment random thoughts on if this is good or bad of what's being proposed, uh, and the author is able to revise based on this feedback. Uh, and I want to emphasize that you know having a healthy governance ecosystem, one of the biggest pieces is feedback. So if you're in the community, uh, and you know you don't have to comment on all of these, but if any of them catch your eye, definitely go you know spend a lunch break, uh, read through one of these proposals, uh, add some thoughts. Uh, they are extremely extremely valuable. Uh, so yeah, and also if you're on the maker forum and you are uh, giving feedback, you're actually uh, earning money because uh, we have a source cred integration on the forum that you can opt into. And actually, I will. Uh, I will link that. Um, I believe they actually just finished their big trial, but we are going to be, uh, I believe, extending funding to continue the test. Uh, but yeah, here you go. Uh, let me just tag the whole source cred tag here. Yeah, so check that out. Uh, yeah, so you can opt in and actually earn die for contri contributions on the forum, for uh, for good feedback, for comments that earn a lot of likes, for threads that lead to governance actions. There's a lot of really interesting stuff there. So uh, don't think that you're doing this all totally pro bono. We are trying to incentivize uh, the community to uh, to communicate well and to to basically take care about all of these different proposals and issues. Uh, and I am super duper proud of the community uh, because we have, I, I think without exaggeration, the strongest governance community in DeFi. Uh, and it shows, it really shows. Uh, the forum comments constantly amaze me with their level of depth, expertise, thoughtfulness. Uh, so yeah, huge shout out to the community there. Uh, so I'm not gonna go through explaining each one of these. They are uh, they are kind of self, uh, uh, self-explanatory. Uh, maybe, let's see, maybe I'm going to see if there's any one that's not self-explanatory. Debt ceiling instant access module, operational support domain definition. Oh yeah, so this is an interesting one. I wanted to highlight this because uh, Amy has been working on it, and also it's the emergence of a new type of domain team that I don't think many people have uh, talked about or understood in the past, but uh, operational support is going to be a really huge thing uh, for after the foundation finally dissolves and this whole thing is run purely by elected domain teams. Uh, so operational support, it covers a lot of things. It co covers stuff like, I believe, HR functionalities, uh, like cross-domain team coordination, general operations, and then also it's the grants management and distribution. So uh, as you know, the foundation does actively give out grants to try to help fund the maker ecosystem and and help you know help this whole ecosystem flourish. Uh, and I I expect that the DAO would uh, would also be con continued to be interested in um, extending funding to stuff uh, because you know some of the best tools in the community have come as a result of, of this kind of funding. Uh, it helps seed. Uh, the most interested and most passionate and the most talented people in the, in our space uh, to do cool shit around Maker. So definitely check check out this uh, MIP and uh, add any feedback. Amy Amy and uh, and everybody in the community would greatly appreciate it. Uh, sub proposals. So oh yeah, look at that. There's a sub proposal for source cred funding. So I believe they're actually about to be seeking funding directly from the protocol which is really, really cool. So at the moment, uh, SourceCred was funded by uh, the foundation, uh, grants through the foundation. But if I am right, and I'm totally assuming, but I assume that this, yeah, it would come from the Maker Protocol. Uh, that's really, really cool, actually. Uh, so moving on. Yeah, facilitator onboarding, I believe that's Amy. Um, calendar exceptions. Oh, this is an important one to note. Uh, this MIP is actually talking about skipping the December monthly governance cycle. 
Uh, I highly suggest if you have an issue with that to go comment, but in general, the community sentiment seems to be pretty, uh, pretty like aligned that it might be a good idea to skip the monthly December cycle and just, you know, focus on those first couple of weeks with weekly governance cycles. Uh, because the last two weeks of December, as many of you know, are filled with uh, some of the year's biggest holidays, and most people are uh, on sabbatical, and it is, generally speaking, uh, those couple of weeks are downtime for a lot of people. So, uh, And it's it's more or less like universal, I'd say, but that's a strong word, so don't take my word for it. Uh, if you want to learn more about MIPS, by the way, uh, if you go through the relay, it'll they'll point you places. So uh, you could definitely go check out all the different MIPS uh, at the forum. And yeah, uh, yeah. So weekly governance cycle, uh, we got three minutes, so I'm going to run through this a little bit quicker. Uh, weekly governance cycle, we have a number of polls, as we saw in uh, in Derek's demo today. Uh, there's approved maker representatives. There's a, a poll to increase the surplus uh, buffer. It's actually not the surplus auction buffer. It's just the surplus buffer. But I believe that the forum title is like surplus auction buffer. Oh, no, they changed it. Cool. Yeah. Uh, but either way, uh, it's going to be, if this goes through, it's going to be changed from 2 million to 4 million. Uh, there is a lot of discussion around why. Uh, uh, I will leave it to you guys to figure <laughs> figure it out. Just click on this discussion link. Um, yeah, these are just Oracle stuff, so I'm going to skip over it. Number of community green light polls. These are all based on the applications that were submitted over the last month. So go check those out and vote. Uh, these are, uh, so the Maker Relay actually also added a section recently about the votes that happened last week that actually passed or failed even. Uh, but, oh no, I guess this is a, uh, Oh yeah, zero, yeah, no, these are all passed. So uh, we added an ETH B vault type. Uh, if, if you didn't notice, uh, this one has a lower collateralization ratio and a higher stability fee. And we're testing out this idea of uh, alternative um, facilities for the same collateral, just with different param risk parameters. Uh, there's a rates V2 poll uh, that's, uh, that's going on. There is two polls about adding the next vaults. The next vaults are, uh, if these go through, which uh, they passed, uh, Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi, and BAL. So that's Yearn and Balancer protocols. And so, yeah, check those out. Uh, all the domain teams did their assessments, including risk assessments, smart contract assessments, and Oracle assessments. So there's a ton of info there uh, that is valuable. Um, yeah, so these are the smart contract, oh, sorry, this is, these are the domain team updates. There's uh, just a couple that were worth highlighting this week. Uh, I'll leave it to you guys to read, but this was covered both in the governance call on Thursday. Uh, and also, yeah, just these are the quick points here. So I'll leave it to you all to check that out. Uh, I want to do a special shout out for this uh, Maker and Claros Fellowship. Uh, so Claros is a decentralized decision-making protocol, uh, and a key use case of Claros is to act as a decentralized verification uh, or vetting mechanism for the compliance of crypto assets with whatever required conditions. So they're looking for a research fellow. Um, uh, yeah, the framework should address features such as code, uh, such as code, risk profile, legal compliance, uh, and they're looking for somebody to work for, I believe. Uh, I think the the grant is three thousand die per month for six months. It's a eighteen thousand uh, dollar fellowship grant. Um, if you're interested in such a, a research grant, um, go apply because it is available. Um, yeah, all the relevant links are over here, so check those out. Uh, yeah, these, this is also just kind of uh, current events, so make a representative stuff. Uh, this has to do with the real world asset. Uh, initiative that Matthew Rabinowitz has been uh, pushing along with uh, 6S Capital, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, there's also an update on state of the peg. So if you're curious how the peg's been doing, it's been pretty much flat at 1.01 as it's been for like the last month or so. We're at 900 million die. We're about 100, uh, 100 million away from the big B, which is ex exciting, the big 1 billion. Uh, but of course, it's been it's been pretty flat for the last week. Uh, I'm gonna skip over all these details. Uh, yeah, let me see if there's anything in particular that I really want to um, shout out. 
Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Yeah, we had a demo day last week on last week's community call, so check that out if you weren't here. Uh, oh yeah, I wanted to also specifically shout out if you're interested in governance and you have uh, any uh, intro to governance questions, uh, feel free to sign up for the governance Q&A sessions. They're every Monday at 1700 UTC. So uh, you can check this link out. I'll actually post it in the chat because I think it's uh, long for wisdom would greatly appreciate it. If you are interested in being more active, if you have like outstanding questions, join this. It's kind of like office hours with the governance facilitator and, uh, and long for wisdom is without a doubt, hands down, one of the most helpful people and one of the smartest and most proactive community members uh, at MakerDAO. So go check it out. Uh, he is a ve very valuable resource. And there goes my alarm for some strange reason. Um, anyway, I hope that beeping isn't too crazy. But uh, yeah, check out those sessions. Uh, and with that, I'm going to end the call. Um, thank you very much for checking it out. And uh, I hope that this was valuable to you all. Take care.